All right, continuing in chapter 11 on solutions, we need to discuss units of concentration. We need to see how we can quantify the amount of solute we have in solution. So there's a number of units that are used on a regular basis, and we need to do all of them. Molarity, normality, molality, mole fraction, and mass percentage. All right, concentration units. This is a great list of the ones that you pretty much need to know. The percent by volume here and the percent mass to volume, we're not going to be using in chemistry, but they're very common in industry. So first one we're going to start with is percent by mass. It's frequently abbreviated as percent M slash M. It's also abbreviated as percent W slash W, where weight is just used instead of percent by mass. And it would simply be the grams of the solute over the grams of the solution, noting here that the grams of the solution are going to inherently be the grams of solute plus the grams of the solvent. We're going to have to add them up, and when we do, we get the grams of the solution. Percent by volume is used in alcohol content. You'd see it in wine. Percent mass to volume is used, for example, in a 5% dextrose solution in a hospital. That would be grams of solute over the volume of the total solution in milliliters. Now, there are these units that we're going to use when we're looking at properties of solutions. So, in order to do vapor pressure lowering, we have to have mole fraction. Mole fraction is unitless and is simply moles of the solute divided by the moles of the solute plus moles of solvent. Molarity, we know molarity. Molarity is moles of solute over the volume of the entire solution in liters. The last one we need is molality. Molality is a lowercase m, and it has the advantage of the fact that it is temperature independent. Our masses and moles do not change when the temperature change. Molality is moles of solute over the mass of the solvent in kilograms. So back to what we know. Molarity, capital M. We say molar when we have, say, a 1.5 molar solution. It's moles, of per moles per liter and it's moles of our solute over the volume of the solution in liters. We use it very commonly with acids and bases. Now, normality, you might see this more often on something like the MCAT. This is the number of equivalents. This can be used in a lot of ways, but we're going to do it particularly for the number of moles of an H plus or OH minus that a molecule can form. What do we mean by that? If we have HCl, we have one mole of H plus for every one mole of HCl, and our solution is both molar. So let's say that we had one molar here, HCl, we'd have one mole of either HCl or one mole of H plus, and our solution would also, in fact, be one normal. So what is not one normal? When we have more than one H plus. So for example, if we had sulfuric acid, H2SO4, for every one mole of this, we have two moles of H plus. So whatever our molarity is, we are going to multiply by the number of H pluses or OH minuses. So for example, if we had five molar of calcium, hydroxide, we would have this times 2 or 1.0 normal. Why? 2 moles of OH minus. Molality. This is a lowercase m, and our solution would be described as molal. So if we had a, say, 0.5 molal solution, it would be 0.5 moles of solute for every kilogram of solvent. This is our only unit only one where it's not the total. Note, this is not our total, whether it's total moles or total volume. This is going to be just solvent. All of our percents, we can have percent by mass. We see this a lot when we're buying large solutions. Um, for example, we could buy sulfuric acid that is 98% by mass, and we do M slash M, H2SO4 in water, and this would in fact be 98 grams of sulfuric acid and 2 grams of water. 
And I realize it's a lot more sulfuric acid than it is water. This is still the solute. This is the solvent because it doesn't change phase. And this would be a 98% by mass. And these are other units that are fairly commonly occurring. So let's do a couple. If we have a 75 milliliter bottle of wine that is 12% by volume alcohol, how many mils of alcohol, and by the way, that is the alcohol in wine is ethanol, will it contain? Well, 12% means 12 mils of the alcohol per 100 mils. We're going to define it out of, by the way, remember we know percent is out of 100. So our 12 mils of alcohol out of 100 mils of wine is going to equal X mils of alcohol every 750 mils of wine. And we're just going to cross multiply. Give us 90 mils of our alcohol. So, what about this one? How many grams of nitric acid, HNO3, molar mass of 63 grams per mole, are needed to make 500 grams of a 5.53% solution of nitric acid in water? Well, first of all, we're not going to need the molar mass because this is just a grams question. 5.53. Here's what we know. We know that we have 5.53 grams of nitric acid for every 100 grams of solution. So this is going to equal X grams of our nitric acid for every 500 grams of solution. With this again, we are going to cross multiply, simply multiply this whole thing by 5, and that is going to equal. 27.7 grams. The key anytime we do our concentration units is to know exactly what this means. 5.53% by mass is 5.53 grams of nitric acid out of the total grams of solution. Mole fraction. We are going to use mole fraction and particularly mole fraction for a solvent to figure out some information we need for our colligative properties. By definition, the mole fraction, and this has, isn't an X, this is a capital Chi, is moles of whatever it is over the sum of all of the moles. So if we were to have, say, 69.8 grams of methanol dissolved in 100 grams of water, what is the mole fraction of the methanol? So we know that our mole fraction of our methanol going to equal moles of methanol over the sum of the moles of the methanol over the moles of water. So to do this, we're going to have to get moles of each. So if we have 100 grams of water, and we know that the molar mass is one mole for over 18 grams, we can get the grams of our water, excuse me, the moles of our water. This is going to give us 5.56 mole of water. We can do the same thing with the methanol. If we have 69.8 grams of methanol, and we're given here, or we can calculate that our molar mass is one mole every 32 grams, we can take and divide 69.8 divided by 32, and we will get 2.18 mole of methanol. So to finish this up, we need the moles of our methanol divided by the sum of the total. This will give us 2.18, again, mole fraction of our methanol, 2.18 divided by 2.18 plus the moles of the water, 5.56, for a total mole fraction of 0.28. Two is our mole fraction. Now, because this is a one component, or excuse me, two component system, the mole fraction of water would simply be 1 minus 0.282. Because we only have water and methanol in our system, the two have to sum to a total fraction of 1. Okay, so molarity and molality. We need molality when we are doing temperature dependent conversions. Please note molarity, capital M, is per liter of solution. Molality is per kilogram of solvent. 
So let's take a look at this question. If we have 89.7 grams of urea dissolved in 700 grams of water, what is the molality? What are the moles per kilogram of solvent? So let's get moles. We know the molar mass is given as 60.1. Obviously, we could calculate that as well. But if we divide this out by 60.1, we are going to get 1.49 moles of urea. Now, the only other piece we need is mass of the solvent, but the key is it must be in kilograms. If we have 700 grams, we know there's a kilogram for every 1,000 grams, and this is going to give us 0.7 kilograms. So what do we have now? We are going to get that the molality, lowercase n, is equal to 1.49 moles divided by 0 0.700 kilograms, and our molality of solution is 2.13 lowercase m, and we would say 2.13 molal. So, because we have all these concentration units, we have to figure out how to go back and forth, how to convert between them. So, here's my first advice. Take whatever the concentration is and write it as a ratio. So, if I have two molar, capital M for molar, I'm going to have 2.0 moles per liter of solution. So not only are we going to write it out, we are going to define it clearly. Moles of solute per liter of solution. We're going to have to separate them, re meaning 2.0 moles of solute, 1.00 liter of solution. Once we have done that, we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do them. We may have to change the units of both the solute and the solvent. And then we can calculate the given concentration or what we're going to need for the new concentration. So here's what we have to realize. The other piece of information we might be given is the density. Now, why would we want the density? Because the density allows us to go from grams of the solution, and this would be density of the solution, into milliliters of solution, because we know density is grams per mil. And if we're going to get, for example, molarity, which is in units of volume, into molality, which is in units of grams, we're going to need the density. So, example in the next slide. Hydrochloric acid is 36.5% HCl by mass, and this is its density. Let's get the molality and the molarity. So, step one, write down what it means. 36.5 grams of HCl for every 100 grams of solution. And we're going to continue to write this out because we know the solution is a combination of the solvent plus the solute, which means we actually can figure out how many grams of water we have. Because if we take 100 grams of the solution and we subtract from this 35, excuse me, 36.5 grams of HCl, we are going to get 3.5 grams of water. And we can also use the grams of the solution to get the volume of the solution. So part one, molality. I'm doing molality first because I know to get molality, I'm simply going to need moles of HCl over the mass of water in kilograms. I can get the mass of water in kilograms because I already have it in grams, and I can get moles of HCl because I have grams of HCl. So let's set this up and do this one. I have 36.5 grams. Look up and calculate the mass of HCl is one mole for every 36.5 grams. Yes, we made our math easy. And this is going to give us one mole of HCl. So if I take my one mole of HCl and I divide it by the mass of water in kilograms, if I have 63.5 grams, if I divide this by 1,000, because there's 1,000 grams per kilogram, this is 0 0.635 kilograms, and my molality is going to be one mole for every 0 
five kilograms or a molality of 15.7 m, 15.7 moles per kilogram of solution. Now, we need molarity. Molarity is going to instead be moles per liter. Well, can we do this? We can because we know we still have one mole. We have one mole because that's what we started with our 36.5 grams, giving us one mole. But now we need the volume in liters. So let's see what we know. We know that we have a density, and we know that we have 100 grams of solution. So if we have 100 grams of solution, and we know there's a mill for every 1.18 grams from our density given in our problem, which we'd have to be given, this is equal to 84.7 milliliters. Well, if I have 84.7 milliliters, I know there's a liter for every 1,000 mils, and this is going to give us 0 0.0847 liters. So my molarity is going to be one mole divided by 0 0.0847 liters, and that is 7.8 capital M for molar. The molality right here and the molarity are frequently different numbers because our density is rarely going to be one. All right, so let's do a couple of more. So the question is, or how are we going to figure this one out? We need to address what is the molality of this concentration of ethanol. So we started out by defining our units. We know that molar is moles per liter, which means that if we have 5.86 molar, it's 5.86 moles in one liter. So if we're going to get molality, we know immediately that our molality is 5.86 moles. But what we need now is one more step, and we need to figure out how many kilograms of the solvent. Well, to figure out the kilograms of the solvent, we have to realize that we have one liter over here of solution, not of our solvent. So we're going to have to get one more step here, and that is we're going to have to use our density. We know here that if we have one liter, we have a thousand mils, and our density is 927 grams per mil. So we have a total, or excuse me, 0.927 grams per mil. So we have a total of 927 grams of solution. If we could subtract out the grams of solute, we would get grams of solvent and we could finish this question. So we have to address how many grams of solute we have. Well, we know some things. We know we have 5.86 moles of the ethanol. Ethanol is our solute. Well, if we knew the molar mass of ethanol, we would figure out how many grams we have. So let's calculate our molar mass. We add this up, we are going to get 46 grams per mole. And if we multiply that by the 5.86, we're going to get the amount, the amount of the ethanol in grams. This gives us 270 grams of ethanol. All right, now we can get the total grams of the solute because we have 927 grams of solution. And if we subtract out 270 grams of ethanol, we are going to get 27 grams of, solute, of our solvent, which is our water. We need kilograms of solvent, so we're going to divide by 1,000, and we're going to get 0.657 kilograms. So our molality now is going to be 5.86 moles divided by 0.657 kilograms, and that will give us that will give us 8.92 molal. So step one, understand our units. Step two, use the density to figure out how many grams of total solution. Realize that for molality, we need moles per kilogram, and then figure out how many grams of our solute we have. 
giving us what's left over as the kilograms here of our solvent.